There I am. Hi. <laughs> yeah, lovely to meet you. It's it's always lovely to meet um, everybody on this page, actually. Lovely to meet you. Well, I'll say again, I did meet you one time, but it was a while ago. So thank you so much for asking me to be on here. Oh, that's that's um, my pleasure. Absolutely. Uh, where did we meet, Monica? Uh, I mean, I think it was after a concert. I came over and said hello. I do have a picture. I should have brought that along, but I can send it to you later. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you're in West to. Hollywood somewhere. Okay, so it was several several years ago. Yeah, I think it was 2016 during the Paper Gods tour. But it's okay. A pleasure yeah. to talk to you here, and you are a fantastic stage presence. We all love you. Thanks, thanks. I, 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 it's, it is infectious. Duran Duran for all the loyal supporters and myself included. It's, it's music that you that you keep going back to, isn't it? And that's why they Absolutely. have such a loyal fan base. For, and I, you know, I include myself in that. That's, that's why I keep enjoying it as well. So, what do you think of the the choice that I the um, painting <laughs> of your painting choice? Oh. You know what's funny about that one? I'm going to I'm going to tell you. One reason I included it was um you know, that was a practice piece because it's an it's a Renoir. And um how dare I try to No, I, I was using it to practice technique. So, um it's called A Girl with Her Cat and I happen to love cats. Um and I just thought it was a good one to sort of practice that very soft look when using acrylic because I started out using um, oils and uh, a friend of mine who's an artist and I would get together and I'd ask her for you know tips but I just I wanted to sort of practice getting that soft look which is more difficult with acrylic. Um, it's so funny talking about painting because I really um, I don't like put my work up for art or anything I thought about it with with the series that I showed you with the women sort of floating in the air, I call it rising and falling. Um, but I do that then, because this is, as you said, this is a, this is a practice. I'm wondering if that I was can... a practice piece, but I yeah. mean, it's, it's pretty close to the, it's close to the original. I don't try to be exact. Um, because then I feel like if I'm practicing something, I'm putting too much pressure on myself and I start to critique self. Um, and um, I know I mentioned yesterday uh, or la late last night, I, I, um, when people were talking about, um, oh gosh, I don't remember what the subject was, but I basically said that for people who don't consider themselves artists, they do have creativity, they do have artistic talent. It's mostly fear that keeps them from doing it and practicing. Um, I only consider myself as far as painting um, slightly above average. Um, I do it because I enjoy it. Um, I'm going to keep practicing. You know, people look at the sort of the, um, you know, all of the famous artists and painters and they say, God, how, how do they do that? Well, yeah, they do have definitely have a gift within, but they practiced day and night, night and day. They sat out there and the landscape or, or the human figure and they practiced. And so it helps if you have a little bit of, um, you know, artsiness within you. But I do. I try to encourage people who are like, oh no, I can't paint. I can't paint. Yeah, sure you can. Sure you can. Just try. Do try an abstract. Just blend colors, which is like one of the most peaceful and therapeutic things. Um, mm. So everybody can paint. And uh, I taught. I taught some art classes for children in elementary school, and I was always pushing the arts for um, that age group. Oh gosh, sorry, this is bling, bling, bling. That's um, okay. I was um, just wondering whether to try and screenshot another another image, but I don't, we'll, we'll stick with this sure. one. But I'm, I don't suppose you've got access to those ones that you could show them from your side. Oh yeah, I could. Might be so, more, yeah. So, um, what is this doing? Okay, ooh, please tell me I didn't lose you. Well, I can still see you. Can you not see me anymore? <laughs> I don't know what happened here and popped up. I don't do many um, Zoom meetings, so I apologize. No, that's okay. Um, You're still there. We're, we're, we're both still here. Yeah, and I saw a glimpse of your artwork. I know. 
Oh goodness gracious. Oh, I have, you, have you lost me? I I can't. Can you see? You can't. Oh, you can, I can see me. I can see you. Can you and see I me? Can't see you. Well, since you can see me, I'll put this up and I'll keep talking until. Okay. Um, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's the it's the bottom. <laughs> well, I can, you are. Second. I'll pause the recording. Anyway. There you are. I found you. There okay, you are, you beautiful. <laughs> okay. So so during the um oh okay go ahead you wanted to did you want to ask no me? I'd love you to talk about that okay so during the pandemic I started doing um these which I call rising and falling I actually did put a little I did put some thought into um what they meant to me but I I think I found out what that was after I painted them so here's one and then when I say rising and falling, so I felt that during the pandemic, that's what I was doing. One day I'd be falling, the next day I'd be rising or one minute to the next minute. So you turn it around. So you're now you're, you're falling, but you're not necessarily falling into something terrible either. Um, there's so many different ways of interpreting art. And um, I think it's just sort of up to the, the person, the viewer who's watching it and the same with with writing or anything else. Um, but I like these because you can put them in, in you know, all different positions. Can Here's we rotate one. it? Yeah, I'll show you another. This was one of the first ones that I did. Okay. So it's a little bit rougher. And I try to sort of do like all body types on it also. I've, I've gifted some of them. Uh, sometimes they're underwater, sometimes they're in the sky. Um, I have sometimes yeah, it's a kind color. of collage. Generally, effect. yeah. So. And this is I this right here, I just felt like something's going on in there. It's I don't know what yet, but it's 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 not necessarily a pregnancy, but I think it's something that she wants to rid herself of and she will, or maybe she won't. Mm. So um anyway, that was a that was a series. I have I have many more. I I gifted uh some, like I said, as birthday presents, but I also liked the idea that this the hair is sort of like roots, you know, the roots of a tree and that she's flying through the air, but she's also looking to be grounded and, and place roots some, someplace. Um, but I, I feel like she's sort of like an ever evolving creature. And I think that that's what women are. I, mm. I think that because we, it, um, it's, And so this was over lockdown that you did this series. That, yeah, I that started, was quite, I, quite a time, yeah. wasn't it? So you sounds like you were really pretty productive over lockdown. And um, and and uh, thanks for sharing so much of what that was about, because with I, I've noticed with well, with different people I've been speaking to it, there is that combination of what it is we share or we we feel we want to share and we communicate or as an artist and then also um, what you the communication is in your doing of the art so sometimes to actually articulate that doesn't feel um or sometimes it can feel uncomfortable other times it can feel kind of almost redundant because the expression was in doing the art so it's interesting the way that you're that you're that you you just sound like you had quite a clear kind of oh you said it was on reflection it was after you'd done them it, it was and it's um you know, sometimes you just, I just do either writing or jewelry making or, or painting and I just do something because I feel it in that moment. Um, but I know that subconsciously there's something going into it. And I love when artists and musicians and filmmakers talk about what went into something that looked so simple and, but yet there was so much thought that went into it. Um, and I love when they reveal that. And some people think, oh, you know, they made all that stuff up afterwards. I don't think so. I think that um, it's there. And sometimes you don't know, like you said, it can be redundant. Like what's, what was your intention or what did you discover after? But I like going back and reflecting on something I've written or, or painted and thinking, well, where did this come from? Because I really liked this and people reacted to it positively. So let me try to remember, um, you know, what was going on in my head when I did that so that I can repeat that feeling. Um, I'm very big on feeling. Um, I, I don't, it's funny because I know when I was younger, I didn't like the intellectual side, say of like poetry. I didn't want, I just wanted to feel. And so did um, you do a lot of poetry as well? Because, um, yeah, because uh, you multi, another 
person in this group that's uh, really you the you pe you paint and then there's poetry and you also write as well. I mean, obviously poetry <laughs> is writing. Um, so did you was that all through your your childhood and was it from an early age? I mean, poetry yeah. is that something you, is that something you did do from an early age as well? I I did. They were terrible. They were all like <laughs> roses are red, violets are blue. You know. Um, <laughs> I, it was a lot of that and they were terrible poems, but um, I think I was always a little boy crazy. So like these poems kind of helped me get my, <laughs> my emotions out. Cathartic in um, that way. But all of it is about not, you know, all of it, like I, I, do, I love the arts. I'm just art to the bone and I love people or, and, and musicians and artists that they just live for art because I really think that it's urgent. It's urgent in the world. And unfortunately, like at, at schools, unless it's an art school, mm. um, traditional school, it's the first thing that they cut. And that's mm. what I used to fight for. Um, do, you, I, do you teach it as well? I, I don't, I was volunteering a lot at the, I mean, I have just in little bits, you know, I have, I've like covered for teachers and things like that. Um, I at the elementary school, the local elementary school, um, public, uh, you know, I found myself, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna be one of those moms that's always hanging out at the school and and like, I need to fix this, I need to fix that. But as far as the arts went, I enjoyed it and I wanted them to pay more attention to the need for arts. So mm -hmm. you have to get on the council and you have to do the, a little bit of a political thing, which I don't like, but in right. the end, if they're gonna increase the arts and they're going to encourage kids a good thing. Um, and teach them that I did a couple of classes and I, I always emphasized, don't worry about mistakes. Don't worry, you don't have to keep up with anybody. It's art, do what you feel. Yes, there are things that will help you, mm. um, you know, uh, do what you want and end up with you know um getting your vision on the page but don't fear is what stops everybody from writing and painting and they're just afraid of failing and mm, i'm and afraid I'm still of yeah, what other people will think of it or yeah exactly afraid of the afraid of the process really when it when it what clearly is but there can be so much expectation piled on on what you so kind much. of want it to be like even if you don't know what that is when you start but this yeah. is kind of thing. you want it to be good i guess which is a, um which is a which is can just get, completely get in the way of the process um so so what is it that you do you kind of have an equal balance of all are you full-time you do you work full-time as a writer monica or or I, what? so i mean what, what is I, it so for money at the moment <laughs> I am primarily, uh, I, I have a business partner and we have, um, we make jewelry from vintage pieces. Oh, I, saw I absolutely that. love, I absolutely love um, vintage costume jewelry. There's nothing like it. Um, I'd have you to have say- You have any of that? Yeah. You want me to show you a couple of yeah. things? Yeah. So, yeah, thanks um, for sending those images. When I um when I just uh, clicked on them to enlarge, they're really small. They've just come oh, okay. out of thumbnails. So I'm like, oh, if you've got them, it's gonna look. It's gonna we're gonna be yeah. able to see them. It's just as well because the jewelry, honestly, like one of the things that we make um, are these, and they actually do need demonstration because okay so i'll explain the piece to you like what went into this um mm -hmm. i love this and I, I can't sell it we were supposed to sell it and i end up going no 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 no. we have to keep <laughs> that we have to keep it i can't sell it okay so here's the thing with this which which is really interesting and and this is a um a friend of mine so it's just us two she started the business her name is miriam she lives around the block from me and um and then i joined her and I, at first I was just doing sales and I was like, oh my God, I can actually sell things. Like, ah, this is because I like, because I love them. That's yes. why I but so here's it feels natural because you're enthusiastic, you're enthusing. Yes. Yeah, and they're, call, they're fantastic. I, I, call, I really enjoyed what I, what I saw. I loved the oh, good. glossy one as well. This one's, this one's really gorgeous. This is mm. one of my favorites, but here's the thing. They're magnetic. So oh. watch this. So it has a magnet so you don't get pinholes through your beautiful scarves or your hat That's or your purse clever. or your jacket because I love those old brooches, but they they flop, they're not balanced. Yes. 
And then, you know, I have like this one beautiful silk scarf that my husband got me and I, there's no way I'm going to put pinholes through it. It's just, no. I'll never have another That's a clever like idea. So, I hope yeah, you patent in that. Or maybe I'll have to, we'll have to um, wait until you've done all that before we release this, this interview. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, oh, we've been, she's been doing these for 12 years. Oh, right. So, okay. Well, that's, that's fine. That's oh, yeah. such a good idea. And do they stay? I mean, even with magnets. Oh, does it... God, they're, they're so strong. I mean, they go through like multiple, multiple layers. Oh, that's layers. such a clever idea. Oh, I isn't mean, that gorgeous? I mean, you just gorgeous. match the polarity. That's why I didn't even have to look. That's and, gorgeous. Um, and we have like every style. Thank you. Are you I'll wearing one that you made as well? Uh, I didn't put it on because uh, it was, I had this on, which I also made. This is yes. not a brooch. This is uh, like an original design that I made out of like five different found pieces and I love it because it's like a little bit punk and it's a little bit steampunk and it's a little bit um you know 1800 so I I love this I love this piece I don't know how you managed to actually give any of them away I won't give this one away no I'm not I'm sure you won't well I hope you don't give any of them away but I could see how it could how easy it could be to get attached to them and not actually quite want to sell any of them (laughs) it's terrible i i'm like no no we can't sell this one but then you know the reason we can't sell this one is i don't think we should sell this one either because (laughs) but we do we sell a lot of the gorgeous ones sometimes there's like sometimes there's one in particular i i like that one had you know the paint palette on it so i loved it and it was made from um you know it's probably from copper from the 60s that's uh hand painted with enamel so i i just I love that. And then this piece on the back is Bakelite, which is people love Bakelite and collect it. Um, okay. Because- When's Bakelite? When was that from? Is that the 60s as well? Bakelite, well, we have some really, really unusual pieces that I would say were 30s or 40s. Oh, I earlier. I, mm. I should look up to refresh my, my memory. But we do have like... Um, so you like vintage rest- materials or you kind of mix and yeah. match your... Oh, yes. We, yes. Like, here's another one. And um, I love this because it has that Art Deco thing going. And yes. this, is actually, this is actually a piece in the 80s. You probably remember they did a lot of um, kind of Art Deco revival. So, and I, which I, I happen to love, like the 80s and the 20s. So that's like fantastic. Perfect. So what's the distinctive Art Deco-ness about it? I mean, I do know Art Deco, but I... I, yeah. I couldn't, I'd probably identify it, but wouldn't be able to say what it, what, you know. Um, Art Deco, uh, I mean, in jewelry, I would say that it's, it's the, it's the geometrics of it. Mm-hmm. It's the geometry really of it. Mm-hmm. So this has that sort of feel to it. Um, this top piece I'm going to guess was, um, was 80s kind of, uh, you know, Art Deco revival. And then the back piece is actually antique hardware. So that brass. And oh, then right. Okay. Put in. Mm-hmm. So I call it like painting with jewelry, which I absolutely love. We sit there and, obs- and she, <laughs> and um, my partner Miriam was like, she was like, okay, okay, okay. That's enough. We have to stop and eat something. I'm like, no, I can't stop. Cause it's, <laughs> like, it's so satisfying when you find the right um, combination. Combination. So you, where do, where do you, I mean, I was um, speaking to Anita f- about a couple of months, a month or so ago about, she was really into repurposing. That was a big part oh, yeah. of her crafts. But with yours, there's a, um, there's obviously a, there's more than that, cause you're doing the kind of, well, I mean, here's, here's what weren't just jewelry. It was all sorts of different crafts. So do you yeah. get a real buzz out of finding the, of where oh, you source everything from? Treasure mm-hmm. hunting. Mm-hmm. It's probably, between that and the actual like you know constructing of the pieces those that's like my favorite thing I love where'd you go is that like when we have car boot sales over here I don't know if you have them over there but we have or do you go like vintage just um just secondhand jewelry shops and that kind of thing so Miriam um who started the company who's my neighbor and friend she what's it um, called by the way well it has a very long name but we have several we we use different names and, and on different like social media but it's um brooches and bracelets by Miriam uh on Instagram it's jewelry by Miriam okay and and uh I know we're supposed to be consistent but it, it, it's sort of like a mood thing but yeah. um we um here's another piece that I refuse I will not 
So I will not let that one go. Yeah, tell I us about this, because is that your, the, your painting as well? Oh yeah, it is, because I'm obsessed with the Chrysler building. And, and as you can hear from my accent, I'm a New Yorker. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just, the- What is it the about the Chrysler building? What, how, mm, well, I mean, it is an extraordinary building, yeah. It's, I just think it's the most beautiful building in the world. I think that the detail on it, and when you see it in person, I mean, this does not do it justice. That's just no, my- How old is the Chrysler building? Oh my gosh. Where was it built? It seems to go with the design that you've done. It, yeah, this, it must this, have This been. kind of almost looks quite kind of, um, Oh, I don't know. It looks quite science fiction-y almost. Yes, because there was a phase like the movie Metropolis, right? I don't know if so I, I would I'd say like early, I think I want to say early 20s. I'll look it up, but when the building was constructed. But yes, there's this, there's I absolutely love the science fiction art deco um phase. Absolutely. <laughs> was there was there one? Are you are you kindly <laughs> kindly? <laughs> I don't know if they um, actually so call joining it. Joining my um, ignorance. Well, I don't know. I don't know if they called it that. Was. But I love science. I love science. That I genre. Feel like, <laughs> I feel like everything is comes back to science fiction um, in a way, and I love it. I love anything to do with science fiction. But yeah, there was sort of the space age, like probably approaching. Um, I guess all that angular stuff is 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 deco and kind of space agey, isn't it? Yes, as well, yes. Mm -hmm. But you did you did you did notice that's exactly right about the um, you know that phase of art deco. Uh, I just think this building is is gorgeous, spectacular. Um, one of the jewels of New York, next to the Statue of Liberty. Fabulous combination. Park. So you've no plans to to pass that on any time. Have you got a few of those combinations where you've done a, a picture that's gone with the jewelry that you do? Yeah. You sell them both together, Monica. Yeah, I I mean I called it. I had one thing called um, uh, the Chrysler Collection. I mean, you know, where all of it had that kind of look. Um, I don't I don't know where my book is. I actually put it. I made a little book as a present, but yeah, I, I, I sort of, that was as sometimes people come. Okay. So we sell at art markets, primarily in California. Oh, okay. Uh, I, would, I would like to go to New York with them because I think. I'm not surprised. Very well. Yeah. Hmm. What is the process? Is it, so is it mainly, well, well you I'm said sorry. you've got your online presence and then the markets. There's just some really gorgeous uh, right. markets. They, they have some real, um, I think it was in LA actually that I went, whereabouts exactly are you? So I'm in the Valley. I'm in Sherman Oaks mm -hmm. in the Valley. That's a massive, um, I mean, there's a massive one in LA that's, that's, oh, yeah. I'm sure there are, you probably like Maybe it was um, Abbot Kinney, like in Venice, they have a market there. There's markets. I mean, what, you, what we do is we find the right type of market or fair. And usually, I mean, if it's a vintage um, oriented market or an art fair, that's where we do well. If it's just like flea market, yeah um then then it's it's it doesn't work out as well because it, when people see you know it's not just taking like an old brooch and no taking, no it's know, a lot more than like that this is this is one two three four so five pieces that came together they weren't anything like that um we take everything apart you asked before actually yeah we restore them we replace stones we clean them sometimes you find something that's like you know a diamond in the rough and you clean it all up. Sometimes you take out the stones and you redo the adhesive because it yellows the rhinestones over time. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a lot of restoration and it's great because then the stuff doesn't go in the trash. And for people who appreciate it, you know, they like original pieces. Absolutely, so, they're, they're really uh, stunning. This they're, they're really interesting as well. And they're just really well, I mean, you can tell that the, uh, there's a real artistry behind them. Yeah. And here's the back. Okay, so they're all magnetic at the back, and that's that's yeah. quite that's not common, that is it? So how so no. that's that tends to be well, that's clearly a passion that's that's um that you're oh, yeah. you're very busy with. And so do you so do you ever have any time for the writing then? Because that was yes. a, a really moving um 
uh, I don't know how how you have how these there's quite a few people in this group that come multi talented. Just think, I don't know how you actually have time to do everything. It's really fascinating. Which is good. Really, um, yeah. That that piece that you sent. Uh, what's it? Remind me what it's actually called. But it's oh, about you your to, mother's uh, funeral. Yeah, yeah? you got to. I mean, read it was that. really moving. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. It every time someone tells me it's moving, I almost. I almost, I get like almost tears in my eyes. I'll, I'll control myself though. Um, I am, um, you know, okay. So, so for money, I do the jewelry thing and I enjoy it. Um, it's, I, I can't, you know, I can't support my whole household on a lot of artisans. I, I talk to them all the time at the, I was talking to a stained glass artist yesterday. You know, it, it's, it has to be mostly passion and then money unfortunately, until you really find something that's huge. Yeah. Um, but so I do that and I enjoy that. Um, I also, uh, you know, I used to, well, I went to film school, another thing I did. And I was, <laughs> and I, was I know, I know. It's all art stuff though, you know. Wonderful, um, oh, it's wonderful. I just kind of. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, as far as the time thing, yeah. um, so well, it's it's more. I'm really yeah. What what was it? Um, I mean, how much writing do you do then? I, I'll post the the link to to your to that. Oh, yeah. Post was that was a little while ago? Do you do regular writing regularly? Are you working on anything I, at the moment? So I I do. And to answer you, um, just to, a little insight on the essay. Um, and I know that people talk about collaboration on here. Um. The essay was something that was in me for years and years and years. And, um, you know, it was about uh, my mother's death when I was 23. Um, and it's taken years and years and years. And I don't even think I'm done doing the work um, to, to understand it, to embrace it, to move beyond. I'm not, it, there's not really a moving beyond. There's no, there's no rush to move beyond, but to mm. look at it in a different way because mm. of the circumstances. So the, the name of the, um, essay was a goth girl's guide to funerals. And so um, I won't go into the whole thing. I, I, if more people want to read it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll put the link in this uh, yeah. at, the, at the top of the of this video for people that want to that want to read yeah. it. I just, uh, yeah, it was really, it was really, really moving. Thank and you. obviously the, we have such an artistic eye, all the imagery was there as well. Uh, and it, that that came through loud and clear that kind of the creative the, the visual creativity because of the images that you painted with your writing um yeah so so is that something um is that you said so uh, there that's not your that's your mother's death is a subject matter that you may that you said you're not that could come out again in some some other piece and and in your writing and are there any yeah. other um well, how much of the right? So you're saying the writing isn't something that you do regularly anymore? So I, I'm so one of the things when you when uh, that I put up on the um, what was it not the intentions the what's the word that the, the things that people are are on your page that they want to achieve personally. Oh, the visions. Right, right. I, I don't know. I, I couldn't think of the word at the moment. Oh, that's, but, um, that's okay. But, I did put something up about, I want, okay, so during the pandemic, like a lot of other creative people, reading and writing, I just, I couldn't bear it. I couldn't, I was so, it was too emotional, too cerebral. So I did things like, like, you know, the jewelry and repairing things um, and, uh, and, and, and playing like the bass and the guitar a little bit, which I just dabble in, but it's relaxing. Um, those type of things that were immediate, just using your hands and not entirely cerebral and having to get in and address the past and the present and the future. Um, during the pandemic, the writing suffered, but I have about two thirds of a book that's, um, it's a young adult book because I'm still in my 16 year old brain. Um, oh, you do? Yeah. and. And uh, it's my second one. I, I have to just be patient with that. And I'm a bit of a late bloomer when it comes to that. Um, but that's okay. It's never too late, you know. So you've been writing a book over lockdown. That's what you felt able to do that. Yeah, I had I had it started and I um, I got to it when I got to it. I didn't, I try not, it was just, you know how the lockdown was. It was like, 
People mm. said like, oh, I can't read a book. I can't. I, mm. just, yeah, so yeah. Perfect. Everyone responded in different ways, didn't they? Some right. people felt felt able to be creative. When I really enjoyed vocal coaching, it felt quite active, yes. and it was lovely to um, to to work with uh, different singers, and it, that was great. But I didn't feel able to to do anything creative myself. It just didn't. Uh, where some people I know did. They were very creative. Everybody was different. I think however you you um, negotiated that time for yourself is absolutely fine. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I was able to paint. I was able to play like musical instruments. I was able to repair things. But the the cerebral aspect of reading and writing, I just I, I was overloaded. So I'm, I'm starting to get back into it. But that's one of my goals is to finish that book because I really like it. It kind of has every um, element that I like writing about. Um, and yeah, give us any, like, maybe you don't want to um, say right now, give us any kind of theme yeah. or maybe talk about the, the one that you did before, because it's your second, you might not want to talk about the. I mean, I can just give you a brief, I'll give you a brief. The first one, um, you know, both books address um, death and grieving of a parent. Um, for years, I stayed away from it. And I don't write in an autobiographical way. I just take things from the past and add them to the present or things that I observe. I was just talking to somebody about um, uh, about writing and, and be careful when you're writing, unless you're doing a memoir, um, you know, don't, it doesn't need to be reality because actually fiction will tell your story, possibly tell your story better if you're writing fiction. If you get too stuck on, if it's as, like I said, autobiography, memoir, that's a different story. Um, but- So they're fiction, yeah? Yeah, their fiction. Um, the first one is, I mean, they're both coming of age because that's sort of what young adult uh, books are. And that's, I like them because there's so much going on, so much change going on so quickly. You know, the evolution of like being a teenager, it's just moving every day you're learning. So the first one, I think, um, you know, I was a big club kid um, in the 80s in New York. And a goth by all accounts. And a goth. And so the perfect so I actually I used to hang out at the limelight, but I was underage. Um, I used to hang out at the limelight. And, I don't think um, you can get done for that now anyway. What's that? <laughs> I don't think you'll get done for that now after that confession, Ooh. it's been too late. <laughs> yeah, I loved, I, well, I love the place because I also, I grew up Catholic, you know, um, and, and I love anything that looks like, um, you know, Gothic architecture and that particular building I'm sort of obsessed with. So. Anyway, in the book, um, there's a character and she's, uh, she's coming of age, but in an adult world because she's working in a nightclub that I'm basing on the limelight because it's just perfect visually and, and just what it is. And, and also, so the book is about- I just her, remember what the limelight looks like. You're talking about the limelight here. The limelight in New York City. Okay, because I think there was there was a limelight here at I some do, point. I do believe there was a London and maybe like one other one. It's mm. such an interesting building, and I'm still go past it. And I I've gone inside and taken photographs. The the so the book is about um, coming of age in an adult world because she's working there as like an assistant and kind of a gopher, and um and she's way underage, but she's doing it to. Um, be able to get money for her family and she's doing it because she likes being around you know the the it crowd and she feels more important and she's 16 but she's pretending she's 22. The other thing that the other part of it sort of subtext is um, it's um, the building itself has gone through so like she's going through an evolution the building itself went through a major evolution which is actually true at one point it was a drug rehab center which oh I right! Find amazing. Like this is a this is a gorgeous Gothic revivalist church at Twentieth and Sixth Avenue, and then it becomes a nightclub. And then I think that the um, I can't remember whether it was before or after its popularity that it was the drug rehab center, but I just think that's amazing. It's like the building is is a person. You know, the building is like mm. the for the person and for what and for her evolution. Um, so that's the first book. The second one, I won't go into a whole big no, thing. No, no. It's another yeah. coming of age, but it involves um, a, a certain sea creature. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, it involves blood and water, which I love. It's that Catholic thing. Um, and it's uh, it's not quite sci-fi, but um, it's, it's also, without going into it, it's also about 
uh, grieving. And the two, the creature and the girl who is the main character are both trying to get back to where, what they were before these kind of Change. one, the death of self and the other one, the death of a parent okay. happened in their life. They're trying to swim their way back to their their life. I love well, Thanks for sharing anything as a, sure. as a, as a, um, as an artist and uh, you know, I think it's totally fair enough, whatever, especially when it hasn't actually even happened yet. So, but really, I mean, the amount of different creative things you do, really this could go on for, I mean, I'd be happy. I'm just fascinated um, as I have been with uh, quite a lot of the other people that I've been interviewing. I could listen forever because it's really, uh, uh, thank you for sharing so much about what you do. And also thank you for being okay with the fact that I've I've got an image behind me that that is, <laughs> isn't one oh, of no. yours. <laughs> I, I'm well, it is See, one of yours, but it, what did you say? Who is it? Rem or let's like not even it. go. It's Renoir. Renoir. It's, After it's all Renoir. you've spoken about, this was. Well, I guess it's. Um. But I. But I. I really. Um. Hopefully, we'll. We'll put some in the underneath the comments. Or and also. Um. I, d I don't know if you did. You say you have a web page, probably for your jewelry, but for your. I. I, I don't have a a web page. I mean, I just use like I have. We have our stuff on Etsy and Instagram and Facebook. Okay, well, send me some and I'll put those up as well sure. so that people sure. can see. But I'm gonna say just th thank you. I'm just, I'm totally, I mean, I really, I'm just very curious about your jewelry and I'm gonna look that up on Etsy as well. And um, sure. and it's, yeah, it's all just all, just raised at my curiosity. I'm sure it will everybody else's. I'm really fascinated. Oh, thank you. you. Thanks. Just thank you so much. And um, thank you. and uh, yeah, you're continue welcome. all you're doing. I look forward to um, yeah, hearing more about your your book when that's finished. I'm oh. really this is it's so inspiring. I don't know. <laughs> you have time oh. for many different things. Well, yeah, so many different thing things. You're very inspiring. The whole thing that you're doing here is great because, you know, we all need a little kick in the bum. And in a way, it's a, you know, you're gathering people to inspire each other and we all need encouragement these days and, well, it's to, you know, to learn from people's processes. So um, I, I really appreciate you having me here and being a part of this. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, it's an absolute pleasure. And um, I'm just as interested as you are in in finding out about everybody else. It's really a, a really interesting group of people. So so thanks for um, spending the time to let us all get to know you a bit more. And um, yeah, all the best. And uh, like Thank I said, so I look much. forward. I'm going to be looking up your uh, all the different things that you do even more <laughs> after we finished. <laughs> The jewelry oh, was think... gorgeous. Was so it was all gorgeous. We, let's should we just oh. start the interview again? <laughs> I, 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 do that. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna look back at this one though because it, it was uh, fabulous. Thank you. Thanks ever I so loved, much. I loved it. Thank you so much, Anna. Mwah. All right. All the best. Bye.